Perhaps one of the most frustrating spells for game masters, at least for me over the years, was our spells like scry and crystal balls and and things that give the, the player or players an ability to see into the future or to get a glimpse at what my plans are for the party and the adventure. And while I acknowledge that this is an important set of spells and often mis, uh, underutilized, I think quite a few players don't understand the value of them or how to properly utilize them or they're discouraged pretty heavily by the game master from doing so. I'm, I was guilty of that quite a bit when I was younger because simply put between scry and spells of that nature and spells like uh, locate magic kind of thing uh, it really or locate traps they really frustrated me because you you know you'd spend a lot of effort to create a very challenging environment for the for the characters, only to have in less than a few minutes of spell casting most of them <laughs> blown away. I learned from wisdom and experience and from other GMs and listening to other people's experiences over the years to find more creative ways of dealing with such things or being prepared for them in some ways. And so towards that end, I thought I'd give another five possible examples of how to utilize or to be prepared for the use of scry. Now, the most obvious, obviously, number one is to prepare a half dozen or more tidbits and or rumors that can loosely pertain to your adventure. This allows you to give them some information that's, while not totally false, isn't totally accurate either because i.e. looking into the future or trying to magically you know eavesdrop on a situation or a target or what have you isn't always a hundred percent although some will argue that the spell says otherwise this is an interpretation of the gm of course number two is to create an outline with your subplots one of the early mistakes of course was not having a lot of information uh, prepared for the use of these spells. If I knew, if I knew I had a character or a, a set of characters who had the ability to either communicate with uh, animals or see into the future or to see into the other room, so to speak, uh, and I didn't prepare for that inevitability, it was on me. And I still became frustrated over time because I, once again, didn't do a lot of footwork or preparation for it and found myself on one, on a more, well, I'd, I hate to admit more than one occasion, but on a few occasions, becoming downright surly about it. Uh, not that I didn't go back later and apologize to the character and or the players because it wasn't their fault that they were acting within the rules and utilizing the magic the way it was intended. Number three, if you plan on misleading the, the player characters by giving them false vision or clues, be prepared, prepared for your campaign to go off track. I have to tell you how many times that backfired on me over the years because especially in the earlier days when I thought I was getting one over on the characters, the players, or being the wise old GM, and in truth, I set myself up for what would become uh, uh, you know, lateral moves or dead-end runs or a complete change in venue because the players went off on a goose chase that I set them on without really meaning for them to chase the goose. And then at some point on a couple occasions having to own up to it, admitting to that, or learning to redirect the misdirection so it goes back onto the plan so to speak. That is, of course, uh, if you're, you know, if you're operating in a truly open and adventure, uh, sometimes this can work to your advantage. But if you're not, you know, if you're just shooting from the hip, then I guess it doesn't matter. Let's see. Number four. Keep in mind that most scrying spells can be, can be noticed by powerful flubes. Be tracked. This could lead to some interesting subplots. And this is true. Most beings, most magically inclined beings, especially powerful magically inclined beings, wizards, demons, what have you, have a instinct or a sixth sense or other magic that warns them or warns them that somebody's eavesdropping on them 
and can take advantage of that. They can also take advantage in some pretty unique and subtle ways, which as I got older I realized was not necessarily a bad thing because then I could redirect the misdirections into totally unrelated subplots that turned out to be major plots before the, before the campaign was over or in some cases became the campaign when we avoided uh, the original stuff. So, you know, it's a matter of learning from my, my mistakes and learning from my experiences and the experiences of others. Number five, try and avoid going overboard on information you do give out. While generally it's wise to give the PC something use, usable and pertaining to the adventure, it isn't necessarily necessary to give them the whole kit and caboodle. Just handing them your remote book and say, here you go, is not necessarily what in the spirit of the game or the spell. It's just things I had to learn over time. So some of my common mistakes were, were A, allowing such magic to frustrate me to the point where I threw my hands up and wanted to quit the game or start another game or just rail at the the particular PC for trying to thwart my attempts to whatever, uh, be over embellishing facts which led the PCs to expecting far more from the adventure than I had planned or from the sub the subplots that I never intended for in the first place, and C, using Scry to lead the group around by the nose. Doing so became problematic when they, when they were overly dependent on it, so what do we do next? Or what happened next? Or how do we handle this situation or what have you? And you don't think about it until you think about it. It's not necessarily a good thing. You find what advice you can. And if I can, if my experiences have helped in any way, then, you know, I hope that uh, it works out. Thanks for listening.